everybody, Merry Christmas. <laughs> um, thank, it's so good to see everybody here. Uh, there's a few people missing, but that's okay. Um, before we start, I just want to open us up in a, a simple Bible verse uh, just about Christmas uh, coming from Isaiah 9-6. It says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Um, let's pray and just open up our hearts to worship. Uh, dear Lord, God, we thank you uh, for this glorious day. Uh, Lord, it's something that we should rejoice in every day, but especially today, Lord, uh, God, we thank you for uh, just the sacrifice of your son um, and the birth of Jesus Christ. Lord, uh, it's such a great gift that um, it's hard to even fathom. Uh, but Lord, um, we just thank you uh, for your everlasting love uh, to send your only son down. And God, I pray that uh, today uh, we can just lift your name on high and just truly give you all the glory uh, when we sing these songs. And we love you so much. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, let's stand for worship. Have none of 
step down into darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you so here I together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me and king of all days oh so highly exalted So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me, and I'll never So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, and you're all together lovely, you're all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. So here I am. No 
Welcome, everyone. Let us pray together. Lord, Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much once again for this awesome privilege to come to your house today on your son's birthday, Father God, just to worship you and to praise your name. And we thank you so much, Lord, that approximately 2,000 years ago that you came to this earth and became the ultimate sacrifice that we may have everlasting life uh, with you. Lord, there's no way we can repay you with anything that we do or give, but um, help us, Father, just to remember this day and commemorate this day, knowing that it's all for you, Lord, and nothing else. Father, we also pray for travel mercies for so many people that are uh, away from the area. Just watch over them and keep them safe and bring them home safely uh, after the holidays, Lord. And also, Father, we just want to bring our tithes and offerings Ultimately, everything that we have, we own, belongs to you anyway, but we want to give a portion, the best and the first to you, Father God, that the leaders of the church may be able to have godly wisdom to be able to use these funds to further your kingdom in the greater Phoenix area and beyond. We thank you, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to official, well, we had our Christmas service last week because we knew we'll be, we'll have a lot of people out of town and such is the case, but glad that all of you can make it today on actual Christmas day. Just a few announcements today. So, you know, as we wrapped up the year, um, we just want to give thanks to a lot of people. Uh, we're not the biggest church, but yet I think looking back at 2022, we were able to accomplish so much and do so much, uh, not only for the various ministries, but uh, the community as well as supporting the missions effort and whatnot. So why don't we just give a round of applause for everyone that was involved in all of that as we wrap up this year. And um, we have an exciting 2023 planned. Um, as you have seen in the announcements in the bulletin, we're doing a Bible reading plan. So last year, we did the whole entire Bible. Uh, this year, we're going to kind of taper that down a little bit to just focus on the New Testament. And so if you have the Bible app, the YouVersion app, please download it, and we can all kick it off together. I think Pastor Derek is officially sending the, sending the invitation to join, and uh, we'll kick that off in, on January 1st. So hoping everyone can kind of join, and we can do that as a, as a church together. Just a quick reminder of... The monthly prayer meeting and the ministry leaders meeting, if you guys recall, in the past, we used to have those on separate days of separate weeks. We've basically combined them, and so hoping we can have more people join and participate. That will be on the second Tuesday of each month at 730 via Zoom. So we'll first of all do the prayer meeting, and then we'll kind of transition into the ministry leaders meeting. Make it a little more efficient, saving people time and things like that, okay? And then just a quick reminder for the women, there will be a fellowship hike on Saturday, January 14th at 9 a.m. Please reach out to Janice if you have any questions regarding that. And then as part of this whole 2023 where we're going to get more into the Bible and studying and things like that, uh, Pastor Derek will be kicking off uh, the Outreach and Eval Evangelism series. That will be three Sundays starting on January 15th. So 
Mark your calendars. It'll be right after fellowship time. We'll get into it for probably about an hour a session. So hoping everyone can join us for that. And we are very blessed today to have Pastor James joining us and being able to address the pulpit and deliver the sermon for us today. We're so thankful that you're able to kind of fill in. Um, but we know that we'll be blessed by your message today. And also for Marie and the entire family, they've actually like doubled our headcount here. Uh, <laughs> she has prepared a, a wonderful meal for us that we can enjoy after this service in the cafeteria as well. So thank you. With that, let me turn it over to Pastor James. All right. It's here. Okay, good morning, everyone, and Merry Christmas. A special Sunday. It's Christmas on Sunday, and how fitting that is, because Christmas is about Jesus, and Sunday is about Jesus, and so we are glad to be here to celebrate uh, this special day with you guys, and um, our home church actually doesn't have service on Sundays, which is kind of odd. They had services yesterday, so we were going to come here anyway, so glad to be here, glad to serve uh, with preaching and with food as well. So I know we have some kids in here, so I'm going to try my best to keep things concise and I do have a little illustration in the middle of the sermon. Hopefully, I have a, a, a kid that will volunteer and maybe earn a little treat, okay? So that when, when the time's ready, I'll let you know. Um, but today, we are going to, I'm going to um, give a, a message about hope. I think it'll be about hope. The, the title is a real, hope, a real Hope in the Birth of Jesus, okay? So that's the title. I'm going to pray for us, and then we'll kind of jump right into it. Let me pray. Father, we thank you for all that you've done. Uh, you are so good and so wonderful. Lord, um, every Christmas we're reminded, at least, at least once a year we are reminded, Lord, how far you are willing to go to love us, to pour grace upon us, to provide a way for us to know you, to understand you, and to, to have a real life as well, uh, to be forgiven to be cleansed, to be filled with, with joy and gladness, and to have all of that forever. And so we praise you for that. We thank you that we can, we can remember that. We can be reminded of that today. We thank you for your word. We thank you that your word always returns to us in a powerful way, and it returns to you in a powerful way. Um, Lord, that your word has the power to change us, the power to really help us understand what everything is about. So as I speak, uh, Father, I pray that you would use me through your spirit to, to help us all understand, Lord, your truth and your message for today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, Lord, this is just a little. Okay, in the movie Rogue One, I don't know if you saw that, but it's a Star Wars movie. It's about this group of rebels, and they have to steal, or they're trying to steal the Death Star plans, right? The Death Star is that massive weapon that the evil empire has, and it's like a planet killer. It can destroy planets, and they want to steal it because there is a weakness built into the Death Star. And so if they can steal the plans, uh, they'll know what the weakness is, and they'll have a chance. They'll have a chance, a fighting chance, to defeat or destroy that Death Star and ultimately defeat the Empire. And as you see in the movie, towards the end, they finally steal it. They finally get the plans, and they're trying to get it transmitted up to the, the Rebel command ship, and they finally get to do so. And so they transmit it, the person has it like on like a floppy disk or something, and so you know it looks like it's all good. And if you know the movie, you know who shows up on that ship. It's Darth Vader himself, right, with his lightsaber. And he starts being Darth Vader, like, he just like choke cold in the air. And it's like kind of a stressful scenario because you don't know what's gonna happen, but they're trying, the guy, the random guy with the floppy disk, he's trying his best to get away and trying to run and the door is stuck and he can't get through so he slips the, the disk through the door and says, take it, and kicks it to like the next random guy. And that guy is running and he's trying to get away and Darth Vader is right behind him and he finally gets away. And they get on this escape ship and for now it, they're safe and it, it's all good. Um, and then at the end, 
um, the guy with that disk, the, the, de the design for the Death Star, he hands it over to a person whose back is turned to us, and we know it's Princess Leia. And with his one line in the movie, he asks her, what is it they sent? And we see her turn with her AI, CGI face, right? And she says one word. She says, hope. And then that starts the original Star Wars trilogy, which I think is pretty cool. When we think of the birth of Jesus, one word comes to mind, hope. The, the realest of real hope is in the birth of Jesus. And I don't know about you guys, but I think hope is what we need more than ever in this world and in this time, more than ever. I think more and more people, and we all feel this mood, more and more people are feeling like there is there's things that are not gonna work out. There's hopelessness, right? It's just kind of this elusive thing where we feel like we may have it for a little bit, but it just kind of slips away always. And even though it can become, it can get really close, it always just seems to, we just can't hold on to it. But we need this hope. And the birth of Jesus, again, gives us this hope. Today, Christmas Sunday is really the start of a real hope that we desperately need. It's, it's the beginning of true hope because basically the birth of Jesus shows us that God is a God of guaranteed outcomes, not probability. Do you realize there's everything in our world is about probability, risk, what are the chances? But God is a God of guaranteed outcomes. And not only is the God, is he the God of guaranteed outcomes, God is a God of real change. And church, this is real hope. This is the hope that the Bible speaks about. And isn't that what we would love to see? I think we want that. And in the movie Rogue One, I think that's why Princess Leia says that word hope. Because these two elements, right, before they have the Death Star plans, the outcome is very uncertain, right? They, they feel defeated, but once they have it, the outcome changes for them. Now, it may not be completely guaranteed, but they feel so different about it. They feel like the outcome is theirs, guaranteed almost, that they can win. And not only is it the outcome that they feel, but they really feel like things are about to change. Right? Things are about to change now. And they're confident in that. This hope that is built on these two things can drive us forward. It can determine the way we see things for the very first time. The way we understand things. And quite frankly, the way we feel about things as well. We need this hope. And the birth of Jesus gives us that. So I want to flesh these two things out a little bit more. That the birth of Jesus gives us hope of a guaranteed outcomes, and the birth of Jesus gives us hope of real change. So let me start with the first one. The birth of Jesus gives us hope. Ooh, nice. Gives us hope of guaranteed outcomes. I'm going to take this from Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. It says in this verse, now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one. And to your offspring, and listen to this, who is Christ? Way back in the first book of the Bible, God made a special promise called covenants, or covenant with Abraham. And built into this covenant was one particular promise, and that was the promise of an offspring. And if you follow the narrative, this happened physically. Abraham actually had a son. He actually had two, but there was one that was the, the promised one, Isaac. But ultimately, God has something more in mind than just his son, Isaac. There was going to be this anointed offspring, the, the special one, the promised one. And this promise, this this person 
would be the promises of all promises. Meaning, if this promise happens, everything else, all the other promises are built into that, and if this happens for sure, everything else happens guaranteed, right? Guaranteed outcomes. And in fact, this was the promise that even Abraham was looking forward to. Did you know in John chapter 8, verse 56, Jesus says, your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. Abraham somehow knew that it wasn't just about his son Isaac being born, but something later on, something even more special, the real promise, the real guaranteed outcome. And this didn't happen for, it, it took some time, it took about 14 generations when you look at the genealogy of Matthew, which is about maybe covers a couple thousand years or so. But the thing that Abraham was, even Abraham was looking forward to, it finally happened. Jesus was born. Jesus became the offering that God was referring to with Abraham. Meaning this, church, God kept his promises this whole time. It took, it took some time, yeah. But God had it all planned out. And there was never a chance that the promise, this outcome would change, would, be, would fade away over time, would be canceled or blocked by some circumstances in the world. And so now all the other outcomes, all the other promises are guaranteed as well. And so I have a little illustration. Hopefully it works. It's a little bit silly, but to kind of emphasize this point, um, I need a kid. Okay, I, I already have one volunteer before I even know. Okay, Caitlin, if, when you start coming up, okay, I'm gonna have Caitlin come up and help me with a little illustration. Okay, come on up. Let's see here. Okay, I hope this works. Okay, come on up. Hello, Caitlin. Okay, I'm gonna give you two choices. And you, I think you said you told me that you really like chocolate. Is that true? Okay, so she really likes chocolate. I'm gonna give her a chance to, to receive some chocolate, okay? So here are the two options. Option number A, gift A, this may or may not be chocolate, okay? Let's see, I'll be even more specific than that. This may or may not be a Kit Kat bar. Okay, so we don't know, it could be, could not be, it could be something else, who knows? Okay, we just don't know, it's uncertain. Does that make sense? Okay, so here's one option. Okay, option B, gift B. This is 100% guaranteed, Kit Kat bar. For sure, chocolate in here, okay? So I want you to choose A or B, but before you choose, one little, one extra rule. If you choose A, you can open it now and just see what it is. If you choose B, you're gonna have to wait till later to open it. And I'll let you, I'll let you know when to open it. <laughs> okay, so that's one little part of it. But guaranteed, Kit Kat bar. This one, you don't know. It could be, could not be, who knows. Which one would you like to choose? Are you sure about that? Let me try this again, okay. 100% guaranteed Kit Kat bar. This may or may not be, and most likely won't be anything, okay? So which one would you like to choose? <laughs> How can I phrase this differently? <laughs> you really wanna choose this one, okay? Because for sure, this is what you want, okay? And you can trust me, most likely, this is not what you want, and not what you think it's gonna be. <laughs> okay, I'll give you this later. <laughs> Would you take this for now? Okay, <laughs> we'll make it work. Okay, thank you, Kayla. Okay, so hold on to it, and you can sit down, and then when it's time, I'll let you know when to open it. Okay, don't open it yet, though. Okay, so you'll just wait. I'll, towards the end of the sermon, I'll let you know when to open it. Okay, and we'll see what's in here, too. Okay. Thank you, Caitlin. All right, kind of work. Okay. All that to say, simple, I know, a little bit silly, 
I wanted to get a kid involved since we have kids in here. True hope is when you trust God, what God has promised. And isn't it interesting that even though God guarantees things to us and gives us promises, in, in some ironic way, we, we do tend to choose the other thing, right, for some reason. But that's not hope. Right? It's not what we wish for. It's not really what we want to happen. Even Abraham wasn't just wishing for something. God told him a promise. God told him a guaranteed outcome. And Abraham simply believed it. That's true hope. We can trust God to guarantee his promises, to guarantee his outcomes, and we can hold on to that. And that will fill us with hope. The second element I want to focus on. The birth of Jesus gives us hope of real change, of real change. And let me read a few verses from Genesis or Galatians chapter 3, starting with verse 13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming, listen, a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who is hanged on a tree. Verse 14, so that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. Skip down to 22. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Church, Jesus came to us as a human. I mean, that's really strange if you think about it. He had a body. He had blood, fingernails, toes, hair. He had birthdays. Can you think about it? He has birthdays that we celebrate. That's Christmas, Jesus' birthday. That's because he's human. And in some sense, he changed. And it gets really tricky because, you know, you can get really, really heretical about it. And it's not like God, Jesus has got his, his divine nature changed, but something was added to that. This thing we call human nature this fully God, fully man, truly God, truly human idea. And through his change, church, through his change, we are able to change spiritually, not physically. He changed in this physical sense. Through him, we can change in a spiritual sense. That is the real change. Not a physical change that's temporary, and it really doesn't work out. It fades, it deteriorates, everything. But a, a spiritual change gets renewed. A spiritual change is the real change that we are all truly looking for. And in Galatians, it says, now all those who believe in Jesus can experience this real change, that we can be like Jesus. We can have a new spirit new spiritual eyes to finally see what we're supposed to see, new spiritual desires to finally feel what we're supposed to feel, and to love what we're supposed to love. When you put your faith in Jesus, the promise, through the promised one, Jesus, we are promised. We are guaranteed real change in our lives. We become a new creation. And when you're a new creation, you have everything you need to grow and flourish. Because in Galatians, it says that you receive his own spirit. And his spirit ensures that there is going to be a real change in you. Now, I have another illustration. Again, a little bit silly. Can anyone see what this is? Tiny. This is a seed. Tiny seed. And did you know that a seed has everything you need or everything it needs to grow, to grow as a tree? And I couldn't bring a tree in here for obvious reasons, but just imagine a tree with roots and the wood and the branches and the leaves, everything in here to become that. But more than that, more than just becoming a tree, everything, this seed has a chance or will change into this, a grapefruit. This tiny thing changes 
to this. And when you see this, then you can say, oh, that was a grapefruit seed, right? This is what this is supposed to become. There is real hope, a real change in Jesus and for Jesus. And through his spirit, you have everything you need to experience new life and to actually change. You will change in Jesus. Church, real hope is found in Jesus, the promised one. Hope in anything else is simply just wishful thinking, right? Just like gift A. Should I open gift A and see? Right? We didn't know what it was, but we can kind of, we're just wishing. I think, Kaylin, you're kind of wishing what was in here. Okay, so I'm just going to open it real quick. Okay. There's just some paper and just toy binoculars. That's all it is, okay? Now, I told Caitlin it could be, could not be chocolate, and it wasn't. And life, in reality, that's kind of how it is. Whatever that, whatever wishful thinking we may have, right, we don't know what it's going to turn out to be. And a lot of time, it's disappointing. Hope in God, hope in God is always based on guaranteed promises, just like gift B. Caitlin, would you open gift B now? And once you open it, if you can just show everyone as well. <laughs> Good sign so far. Ooh, okay. You have to ask your dad. <laughs> so, like I said, Kit Kat bar. God is the only one. God is the only one that keeps 100% of his promises 100% of the time. Things may take a little bit longer than our patients likes. There may be some pain along the way that really pushes against our tolerance level. But is the alternative actually worth it? I don't think so. But you can ponder that on your own. What I know is that the Bible gives us real hope. That God will make all his promises, all his promises, yes and amen in Jesus. And what that really means is that it's guaranteed. Because Jesus was born, because that promise actually happened, all other promises are guaranteed to happen. The Bible gives us real hope that you can have new life in Jesus. And I think he proved it at his birth. He proved it in his life. He proved it at his death on the cross. He proved it at his resurrection. And he proved it at Pentecost when he sent his own spirit not someone else's spirit, not just to strengthen our own spirit. He sent his own spirit to make sure that change would actually, change would actually happen, that it would be certain. So now, in Jesus Christ, anyone who believes receives the promises given to Abraham, the promise of abundant life, the promise of a forever home, the promise of eternal love, and the promise of the Son, Jesus. Today, we celebrate hope. Hope of guaranteed outcomes. Hope of real change. And we give thanks to the one who is at the center of that hope, Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise again. We give you praise for the hope that you give us in Jesus. The birth of Jesus, although even just as a story, is a great story. It's a wonderful story. It's full of drama and tension. And even more than that, it's full of hope. Hope of things to actually happen for certain. Hope of guaranteed outcomes in Jesus. And hope of real change for our lives, for the lives around us and for this world as well. So we praise you for that hope. We praise you that there is a real hope out there. And although others may chase other kinds of hope, wishful thinking, 
Lord, we know that there is a real hope and we can share that hope with others. And when people experience that real change, those real promises, Father, there is glory given to your name. And so we give you glory at this time that you have given all of us, so many of us, that hope. Lord, remind us of that hope once again. Remind us every day of the hope that you give us. Hope that your promises will always come true. Guaranteed hope that we will change in Jesus for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, Pastor James. All right, let's all stand for our final song. Father, again, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. You are the one truly worthy of our songs and of our lives. And Lord, as we go forth, um, Lord, may we go forth in your grace and your mercy. And may we go forth bringing you glory over and over again, knowing that by your grace we are saved and um, we are loved by you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a Merry Christmas, everyone.